The High Court in Johannesburg has ordered the ANC to hand over its CADA deployment committee records to the DA within five days. But the ANC says it intends to appeal that ruling. Back in 2021, the DA's uh, Leon Schreiber filed an application for the ANC to hand over these records. In fact, he joins us via our video link this morning for more on the story. Leon, it's great to see you. Thanks very much indeed for coming on. The DA is calling this a groundbreaking judgment. Good morning, Michelle, and to your viewers. Yes, indeed. It's uh, really a, a victory for transparency and the rule of law in this case, because what this judgment does is it says that when political parties um, interfere in the affairs of state, including in this particular case, of course, in appointment processes, then they are not able to hide behind this veil of secrecy that the ANC has really invoked for the last 30 years. In other words, the public has a right to know mm. uh, when appointment decisions are being influenced by the Cater Deployment Committee, what uh, actually happened and what were the considerations uh, taken into account. I think the judgment is also um, really important for parliamentary oversight. One of the reasons why the court um, granted this application is because it agreed with the DA that if myself as a member of parliament is, uh, are to live up to the constitutional requirement of exercising oversight over appointments, then we need full information and facts about how those appointments were made. Mm. So really a victory for the right to know. Um, it, it makes sense, doesn't it, that this veil of secrecy should be lifted, should never have existed. These are public servants that are appointed to posts that have a direct implication on service delivery in the country. Why should they be secret? No, indeed, that's exactly the case that, that we were making out. Um, the ANC has for a very long time tried to argue that um, these are private affairs of a private body. But the problem with that argument, and as the, the judgment makes clear, is that uh, the decisions and influence that's exercised by the Cater Deployment Committee is not confined to a private space. These are not people sitting around in a room and just thinking about and talking about things that they want to happen. They influence um, they direct as to who should be appointed. And the judgment is crystal clear on this. It says that when the ANC argues these are just recommendations and sometimes they're not taken seriously, it means that there are times when, in fact, they are implemented and taken seriously. And then they cross the boundary into something that affects my life and your life and the lives of all South Africans. Just think about load shedding and all the quality people at ESCOM who may not have been appointed over the years because of cater deployment. And then you cannot hide behind secrecy because your, your actions have public consequences. These are WhatsApp messages, their emails, their meeting minutes going as far back as 2013, uh, Leon. One can just imagine um, the kind of information all of us will be able to glean if indeed these records are made public. For example, if appointments were made in a context where there were more qualified people who also put their CVs forward for that particular post. I think that's exactly what we're going to find in these records. I think it's, you know, the ANC's haste uh, to appeal this case um, just confirms how desperate they are to keep this secret, how, how desperate they are to hide it from you and me. But I think there's a particular problem with the ANC's conduct in, in, in this matter because you, you may recall before the Zondo Commission, President Ramaphosa was um, very specifically asked about this issue for about half a day of his testimony. And one of the issues that Chief Justice Zondo raised at the time was to say, what about this element of secrecy? Um, and he asked the president, do you think it is appropriate when you are influencing the appointment of public servants that those that that influence must be a secret? And the president actually in that moment had no choice but to say, no, you know, actually these things should be made public. But I think the ANC appealing a, a clear cut case like this really uh, belies uh, the president's words in those in that uh, Zondo Commission hearing and really exposes them as, as being very, very hollow. So the DA will continue to, to uh, pursue this case, and we're sure at the end of the day we are going to be able to show to the people of South Africa how the CADA Deployment Committee really laid the foundation for the kind of corruption and service delivery failures we see all around us. And then as chairperson of that CADA Deployment Committee, I suppose these records, if they are revealed, will also 
lay bare the president's own complicity in those appointments? Uh, indisputably so. Um, the president was the chairman of that committee from about 2013, while he served as deputy president of the ANC. And every South African knows that the height of state capture and the Zuma years really was uh, from 2013 onwards. So the president, by definition, was involved in decisions around appointments. We submit in the other court case that we are pursuing on this matter that it was unconstitutional and unlawful for the president and the ANC to interfere in appointment processes through CADA deployment. And these minutes, without a doubt, and in fact, I believe, as likely confirmed by the ANC's desperation to appeal this case and keep these records hidden, are very, very likely to show President Ramaphosa was not an innocent bystander who had no idea what was going on, but was involved in the appointment of the people who captured the state. Now, that is information that is in the public interest and that is why we are determined to, uh, to make sure that South Africans know about it. So, Leon, let me ask you this. How do we balance the fact that this is, this is a, a, a procedure, this is a, a practice, rather, that's the right word, um, that is not unique to South Africa? Governments around the world, they do make appointments to particular portfolios because that's how governing parties work, right? They want their, their policies to be implemented at the highest level. So, so, so that's on the one hand. And then... On the other hand, um, you know, your critics, critics of the DA will say this is just electioneering. We're building up to 2024. Well, on the second point, I think the important point to make is that the DA and me personally, we have certainly not started this fight yesterday. Um, this particular fire application was submitted more than two years ago at this point. Um, and there are a range of things that the DA has been doing, including um, writing to the Zondo Commission um, as far back as 2019 uh, to highlight our concerns about CADA deployment and its role in state capture. So I think every South African knows at this point that this is not a new thing for the DA, and I think that um, um, puts pay to that notion. But I think the second point is an important one, and I just want to emphasize something at this point of the conversation. Our broader battle against CADA deployment, of which this particular case is an important victory, is not about political positions. So in a democracy, when a party gets a certain uh, electoral outcome and with a, a, a list system like ours, it is, of course, appropriate for that party to say MECs, premiers, the president even, councillors, MPs, those are political positions, mm -hmm. and it is the party's prerogative. What this is about is about the professional administration the heads of department, directors general, heads of state-owned enterprises, municipal managers, those are positions that the Constitution and the Public Service Act make absolutely clear must be appointed on the basis of merit and a competitive and fair selection process. CADA deployment completely undermines that and politicizes the civil service. That is what our battle is against, and that is best practice in many successful democracies. DAMP Leon Schreiber, let me thank you for your time on the AM report this morning.